So, so many of you have asked why Malaysia? Why not Turkey, Egypt, Dubai, GCC, Saudi Arabia, all of those Muslim countries? Because that's ultimately what I was looking for, right? I was looking for a Muslim country. I'll tell you for why, okay? Because I, I purchased a place a long time ago in Turkey and I love Turkey. I love the Turkish people. I think that it's a fantastic liberal place to live. Um, maybe a little bit too liberal for my liking, um, but also trying to transact, trying to do any form of business. I would be heavily reliant on somebody Turkish because English isn't a commonly spoken language. Equally, the living is different, you know, the three pin plugs. I know it sounds crazy, but it counts. It really does matter. Also, driving, driving on the left hand side of the road. Believe me, I tried it. I went up the wrong way many times and uh, it takes, it kind of loses your stability that you've gained over the years, right? So that was Turkey kind of ruled out because the Turkish mafia came in after Ukraine war and bought up a whole load of property and the prices of housing went up. That kind of sold me out of that market, but I th still think was God was guiding me. Next step was um, Egypt. Didn't intend on visiting Egypt initially, but did. Loved it. Education center. Dean overload. The Muslims, the, 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 the Egyptians, the personalities. The, it's just fantastic, you know? And then the Arabic language I adore. All of that. And my aim was going to be to go and live in this country and educate myself and join in with those little congregations in the evening. And the weather was right and then their cost of living was right for us and the house prices were right for us. So all of that was, it was in the right place. The one thing that was wrong was, unfortunately, the political unbalance, the systems are still too far behind. I needed something that was going to be able to keep up with the pace for what I wanted to do. Anyhow, somebody said to me, how about Malaysia? Me imagining Malaysia was some little island with parrots flying over my head. Said, forget it. I'm not going that far. It's too far from the UK. I'm going to look at the GCC. So I looked at the Gulf countries. Dubai particularly, because I'm in property and finance, and it makes sense. Everybody was saying how their market is popping like mad, and I should be a bit, I should be a part of that. And I had my intentions, my plans to do that. And I was going to go to Dubai, find myself somewhere to live. Now, firstly, it's expensive, but there is also <sighs> keeping up with the Joneses. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be the person that drives around in you know you have to have the certain car to be in a certain clique you have to be live in a certain borough area to be part of the right crowd um just all of that judging and there's a lot of racial discrimination let's face it and i'm talking i only know from personal experience when my brother lived in dubai and I was hoping things had changed, but from putting out some posts on TikTok, I learned that it hasn't changed much at all. I was hoping that the next generation were gonna be different, but it seems that the next generation, again, through one of my TikTok posts, have um, potentially got worse. Uh, and it's not a pretty place, and everything that glitters isn't gold. And if you want some form of just real life reality, I know all the influencers, they've all headed to Dubai because I say they, they have been there, done that, going on to rooftop hotels and having late entertainment. And yeah, it's all pretty blingy and all of that, but it's not real. And therefore, I ruled out Dubai and other reasons that I've said on my TikToks, right? So along comes now this little island with parrots flying over my head. I decided to do a little bit of research and I was shocked a bit when I saw monorails and skyscrapers and... Um, technology, I, artificial intelligence advances, connections with the Chinese and the Japanese and Singapore, where they are worlds ahead of that side. And I knew I had to go. So I made the journey and I flew, what, 14 hours? Fortunately for me, Malaysian Airlines had pretty decent Wi-Fi and so I entertained myself really well for the whole 14 hours. In fact, I napped for about 40 minutes and that was about it. So 
I get to Malaysia, I'm in KL, and I'm astonished. I'm gobsmacked. My jaw is on the floor. I'm looking around and I'm thinking, what the hell is this? Not only is it beautiful, it is clean. It is on par with the likes of Dubai. Yet, the people are amazing. They are friendly, they are kind, they are mm, non-discriminative. They're just chilled. Everyone's got this chilled mannerism to them. It's phenomenal. And you've got a great mix. You've got the Chinese, you've got the Malays, you've got the Indonesians, you've got Singapore, you've got Thailand, you've got everyone. And guess what? They're all nice to one another. Nobody judges anybody. And you could walk around wearing whatever the hell you want as long as you were covered and you were modest and you looked, you know, in keeping, then nobody says anything. And to top it, the food's great. And an icing on the cake, the weather is phenomenal. It was like literally everything was ticking boxes straight away. The daylight hours, the temperature doesn't get soaring hot. This is it. This is 36 maybe. It's warm. Actually, no, it's hot. I lie. It is hot. But I could take a dip. I'll cool down, but I don't physically have the need to cool down right now. Anyway, I've just had a cup of tea. That's probably another reason why I'm hot, but I can still do that. I can have my coffee and I still feel fine. But it's beautiful here. You know, there's so many different, I'm in Penang at the moment. I went to KL, I went to Malacca. And now I'm in Penang. You know, there's so much to explore. If I had to do away with my passport and never leave this country ever again, I could quite easily do it. All I need to do now is work on family because that's the other real reason a lot of people hold back because of where they've established themselves. But I think that's probably another topic of conversation. Right now, it was a decision as to why I chose Malaysia, not Egypt, not Turkey, not Dubai, definitely not Saudi Arabia because they're still evolving countries. They've still got movement. This country, the systems, the driving, everything is a, a tick box. I have no negatives the only negative i could say is in some places they have these open gutter systems which probably mean i have to go a bit like every once in a while but apart from that i can't think of anything else and do you know what i can drink the water as well i can drink their water the water doesn't affect my belly i've been here now for a few weeks my stomach is absolutely fine what does that tell you there is hygiene here i haven't been bit i got got bitten once I think it was last night on the beach. And I get bitten more in England than I do here. So that's another thing, isn't it? Mosquitoes. Why are there no mosquitoes? There's no dogs. Not that I dislike dogs, but I think there's a place for animals. And there's, I don't see that many cats either. They've obviously got like a place to go. So yeah, I think that summarizes my reasons. And then of course you've got this fantastic view. So another huge deciding factor of Malaysia over all of the other countries, Turkey, Egypt, the Gulf states, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, every single one of them. The exchange rate is generally one pound to about five or six dirhams, ringgits, rial. But what can you buy for your money? That's the biggest point. Now, when we went to Saudi Arabia, money was flowing. With ease, money was flowing. And you were conscious about what you were buying and what you were spending it on, because even though the exchange was pound to about five rial, you were spending on level with the UK, which is worrying because people there whose exchange rate is not as good how were they surviving, you know? It, it, it was concerning. So that was that. That was your Saudis. Dubai, I expect exactly the same. You would pour money down the drain on everything in that country because they want you to spend. They have motive for you to be there. They want you to spend your money there. And as you have no other alternatives, no other options, that's where you're gonna spend it. And there's not many locals so if you think about saudi the locals there they have access to a hell of a lot more facilities than a non-local and the non-locals will have to spend earn and spend within that country same thing happens in dubai you earn you spend it's like the same rat race that you're stuck in in the uk except for you get to live in a warmer climate and let's face it super heat who wants that 
you end up staying in. You want moderate heat, 25 to 35 degrees. So, cost of living. Even Turkey and potentially Egypt as well now, because their inflation's just shot through the roof, right? Their cost of living is high. I've done Turkey. Turkey was on par with the UK as well. And Turkey is falling. It's all part of that, like, that corner of the world that has still got stuff going on and there's no doubt interactions with one another because they're so close to each other, right? So why not shift to the other side of the world? Australia, New Zealand, or Malaysia. You've got Malaysia, you've got Indonesia, you've got Thailand. I don't know about Indonesia, I don't know about Thailand. I know that Singapore is great, that's all I keep hearing, but Singapore is expensive. But Malaysia's cost of living, you can live off of 3,000 ringgits, which is 500 pounds, and quite comfortably at that. I factored in a cleaner, I factored in a housekeeper. I'm talking not just a cleaner. She's gonna do my cleaning, my cooking, my washing, you name it, live in, give me a massage once a week. I'm expecting that for the money I pay. She's gonna give me that. And then she's going to give me, um, what else? Uh, sorry, um, then my food shopping, my schooling, my fuel, everything would be paid for within that 500 pounds. So this is an easier movement for people who are in the UK where you could rent your house out and you could easily cover the rent of a four bedroom det a detached house, 500 pounds in Malacca, that's what I'm paying at the moment, plus five, a thousand pounds, I'm away. The, the only, only thing then is a visa. So you get yourself a solicitor and the solicitor will find a way. I'm pretty sure of it. There's plenty of people living here, whether it's a work visa, whether it's a business visa, whether it's second home visa, whichever way that is possible. But, but try and step out of that mold that you're stuck in and make a move. Millions of people around the world, they do it. Why are we so hell bent stuck, stuck in the UK? Try it. That's all I have to say. Living and cost of living.